hello I hope you are doing great so one of the things I want to show you today is one possible way to implement um, database configuration driven applications or database configuration uh, database driven configuration for your Blazor web assembly configuration right um, in this case, we have an application which is running in Blazor WebAssembly and it has an API, uh, .core hosted API, right? So there are a couple of things that we, you could do, right? So as you can see, we have this project, the client, and the server, right? So in the server, you, one of the things you can go is go to the program.cs and in the program.cs you will find the entry point for the application which is the main method right which uses the create builder method to build all of the configuration and run the application right and here you have this uh, create builder which is um, invoking this uh, create default builder right and then is configuring the default or at least we set it to configure uh, extend it a little bit right so this is the default you, uh, you get the web builder and you configure the web builder to use the startup cs or any kind of configuration you have right now one of the things is that the default configuration in dotnet core or in dotnet in general in dotnet core uh, is using the app settings dot json file right but there are cases where you don't know when you do not want to have uh, all of your configuration in the app settings not in the secrets.json right so in this case one of the this is a demo branch that we created this is the blazor restaurant project right and it's a sample uh, this is a sample uh, branch that you will be able to see in that uh, in that project right uh, so we extended a little bit the secrets.json the only thing that it will have is the connection string uh, to indicate to which database it has to connect to um, because we need to let the code know where it's going to be to connect to get the rest of the configuration right so one of the things we do is we invoke the configure app configuration method in here and you get you uh, implement it receiving the hosting context and the configuration builder right now you need to build the configuration to be able to retrieve the keys and everything right that are configured at the moment right so basically once you hit or execute the build the configuration route will have the all of the configuration that is existent in the secrets.json and in the app settings.json files right so we get the default connection string which we know it's named that way right and then we create the um we start creating the database right so we instantiate the uh db context option builder for the entity framework context we are using we instantiate a new uh we instantiate the context using the um the connection string and the options builder right uh, you also need to set the enable retry on failure in case you are using um, cloud-based solutions because usually um, sometimes you have to do retries and this specific project it um, I developed it using uh, SQL Azure SQL server serverless so the database is um, is stopped most of the time and it will ex will start um, once the database gets a request right the thing is that it won't answer immediately because it has to start right so you do a retry in there then one of the things we do is we get the system config information from a table in the database that this table will basically have a couple of 
properties or fields, right? The system configuration ID, which is just the uh, ID or the identity for the table. Name, which is going to be the key for the configuration and the value for that specific key. So the key system start configuration will basically have a JSON similar to the app settings or secrets.json, right? Uh, with the rest of the configuration so we get it in here right and one of the things you can do is you convert this to a JSON stream because in the configuration builder you can see that in the configuration builder you have access to a couple of methods right you can add configuration source you can add command line configurations right you can add configuration from line configuration you can add environment variables you can add any files, any streams, JSON files, but in this case we are not using physical files, we are using uh, strings, right? So one of the uh, best approaches to use is actually, at least in this case, using the JSON stream, right? So we get the bytes from that, right? And we set that into a memory stream and then we use the add JSON stream. So after we hit this point and when the application reaches the rest of the code in the startup, the configuration object that is in here will already have all of the configuration that are defined in the system configuration table under this specific key. So, so far what we have what we did is configuring the server part, right? Now, how do you configure uh, the WebAssembly part or the client side to use this configuration? So, uh, there are a couple of things you can do, right? Um, one of the best things will be to request your API for the configuration that it needs when you are uh, starting the your client application so remember that your client application also executes executes right or starts in the browser and it also has its own main method and its own set of configuration right so what you can do is you see that we have this configure authentication async right method and here what we do is a couple of HTTP client calls to the API to retrieve the configuration. You will see that we have a configuration controller that has two methods for getting configuration. In this case, we set it as a sample, as a draft, uh, to test how it will work. And currently what we are retrieving is the, um, the Azure B Azure AD B2C uh, configuration for the client side part, right? So here we get the client Azure AD B2C configuration, right? And this is already configured to have a type, a strong type, right? So you can just assign the values from this property in the configuration to the authentication in the provider's options in the MSAL authentication configuration, right? Uh, instead of doing the usual bind that you will do. And the scope, we are just returning a string for the scopes, right? Since, it's a U, since it is a URL. And we set it scope. You could set it directly, right, to instead of assigning it to this variable. And that's basically it you will do. In the case of the controller, basically what we did with the controller is taking advantage of dependency injection, you will see that in the startup.cs uh, where we are registering the configuration, we get the system configuration section, right? System configuration section has a couple of uh, properties in there. And it has this, it has the scope and then it has this one, right? Actually, the scope could be part of this in a better formatted JSON, right? And here we have the MSL class, right? We inject that as a singleton 
and then in our configuration controller we are basically receiving the system configuration in the constructor by dependency injection we store it as a local variable and then in our endpoints we just return the values from the system configuration now there is one thing we are doing here that it will be dangerous depending on your implementation on, and on the data you are returning here uh, we are allowing these calls to be uh, anonymous because this is just a sample branch and it's a test right uh, but and this information is actually uh, not really Uh, problematic to be shared because you will actually even see the URLs when uh, the um, when the authentication pages are redirecting, right? So uh, that won't really be uh, like a, a big security risk, right? But in, if you use this to return other kind of um, configuration, for example, uh, I don't know, user. Uh, credentials, uh, personal information, uh, database configuration, which you, sh which you should not return to the client anyway, right? But in case of you do it, uh, there are a couple of things that it may be better to do. Have your endpoints uh, have a special authentication for the application itself, right? And always using the authorized and it, as it is here and never allowing anonymous. And one of the other things that it will be better to do is also encrypt your data, right? Have a, some encryption mechanism between your client side and your server side, right? So the data is returned, uh, is returned encrypted, and is decrypted only f uh, in when you need it in the configuration, but is not really but the decrypted information is not really visible to the browser or in the network tabs or anything like that, right? Only the encrypted. So there are a couple of things. Uh, that's one of the recommendations you uh, you will have to follow, right? For more sensitive data. Uh, so this is something I wanted to show you. I hope this has been useful. Please remember to visit the links that are in the video description, share the channel, subscribe too, and help us get more subscribers so we can get making more videos. Also put in the comments uh, what other kind of uh, trainings on Blazor, .NET, .NET Core, uh, on Blazor, .NET Core, .NET 5, and Unity and Azure you would like to have in the future. Thank you very much and have a great day.